nu auzi tu, dragă trăguță, Mi-ai cerut ciora cu panglicuță, Și-ai mai vrea, și-ai mai vrea, și-ai mai vrea, mă tale, Să-ți cumpere neica și sandale. Shabbat shalom! Shabbat shalom! Here we are with Rabbi Haim Asa, story number six. Not a very happy story, but an important sto story of our history in the world of Bulgarian Jewry and some very important uh, facts. Rabbi Asa. Thank you, David. Today I would like to talk about the best kept secret of the Holocaust history or Holocaust era, the slaving of the Bulgarian Jewish community in its entirety. And this unfortunately has been a secret in the sense that for 45 years after the Holocaust, the communists did not want to, and Bulgaria was under communist domination, the communists did not want it to become known that a fascist king, King Boris, who was really not a fascist, he was probably more Anglophile than Germanophile, which means lover of the British Empire rather than of the German Reich, but he had no choice. The king had no choice but to join the Third Reich because he saw what happened to all the other countries what happened to Yugoslavia, to Greece, to uh, Czechoslovakia, to uh, Poland and all that. So they were all conquered and some of them were neighbors of Bulgaria, uh, namely uh, Greece and Yugoslavia. They were conquered by the Nazis and destroyed, literally. So he decided that he's going to join the Nazi pact of no, really, no other choice at that time, and he will try to play it as carefully as possible with Hitler to make sure that he doesn't destroy the country, but at the same time that uh, he's not going to cooperate with him on uh, important matters. Well, the two important matters of uh, King Boris was a, that no Bulgarian soldier would ever fight his Soviet uh, brothers or cousins. And Bulgaria and Russia had a very, uh, uh, really great uh, relationship in the past and even today because the Russians liberated Bulgaria from the Turkish yoke, from the Turkish domination which lasted 500 years. So let's say 140 years ago, in 1876, whatever it That's was. Right. Plevna, wasn't that the big battle that the yes. Romanians participated also to help the Bulgarians? Exactly. The, yes, the Bulgaria, uh, the, so the Russians liberated Bulgaria and gave Bulgaria its independence after 500 years. So King Boris knew that despite of all the propaganda against communism and against the Soviets and all that and all that, that he could not fight on the Russian front, on the Eastern Convince Front. Convince the citizens of Bulgaria. Yeah. And therefore this was his uh, red line to say that this line I'm not going to cross. And the other one was the Jews of Bulgaria. After he saw what the Nuremberg laws did to, to the Jews of Europe, uh, country after country, he did consent to pass the Nuremberg laws in Bulgarian, Zakona, Zazashtita, Nanatsieta, and, and the Congress uh, passed it, the Parliament passed it, but it remained really more on paper than uh, de facto. And uh, finally, finally, in 1941, he was forced, literally, to appoint a Commissar of Jewish Affairs. 
uh, who was the person in charge of our uh, uh, Jewish uh, survival. And unfortunately, it was a fascist by the name of Belev, Bulgarian born, uh, German educated, and he went to Berlin to learn from from uh, everybody, from Himmler and from Eichmann and ev everybody else, what to do with the Jews. And uh, he came to back to Bulgaria. He was appointed the Commissar of Jewish Affairs of the State of Bulgaria. Now, going back to the best kept secret, twice the Nazis, and it was a, 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 a emissary from Berlin, actually it wasn't from Berlin, uh, it was originally from, from Germany, but he, he was responsible for the uh, extermination of the French Jews, and uh, other uh, uh, communities of Europe. Uh, Beckerle uh, was, uh, came to Bulgaria to cooperate with Belev in the planning of the uh, resettlement. Resettlement in the sense that nobody called it extermination. It was really resettlement of the Jewish the population, uh, which was the final solution, but it was given a nice name that you're just going to move from from your town to another uh, town or in the country or outside of the country but this is going to be uh, really the end of us. Right, six feet so under. we were destined to be exterminated in March on March 9th 1943 the trains were supposed to load us and the trains, unfortunately for the Germans, but fortunately for us, stood there empty and the empty bo boxcars departed empty without any Jewish people. The reason being? The reason being is that King Boris III, who was the highest authority being a monarchy, um, uh, and the church, the Bulgarian National Church, which is an extension of the Eastern Church, but we have to distinguish here, the Eastern Church in Russia was anti-Semitic, the Eastern Church in Romania was anti-Semitic, the Eastern Church of Bulgaria was not anti-Semitic, as a matter of fact, the, the bishops uh, uh, gathered in Sofia and came up with a document after document and this is in a compilation which I had recently received from Sofia all the anti uh, all the decisions of this Holy Synod S-Y-N-O-D the Holy Synod of Bulgaria passed objecting to the laws and discrimination of the Jewish people and of course vehemently opposed to our resettlement. As a matter of fact, in one town, Plovdiv, which is the second Jewish community of Bulgaria after Sofia the capital. After Sofia the capital, uh, Sofia had about 25,000 Jews. The, the total number was, let's say, in round numbers, 50, 50,000. Sofia had 25,000. Plovdiv was the second biggest, was probably uh, 8 uh, to 10,000. And then, of course, was uh, 20 towns, each of them with uh, uh, 500, 800, 1,000, 1,200, etc. Burgas, my own town. By the Black Sea. By the Black Sea. Uh, Burgas, uh, the beautiful city on the Black Sea, had approximately 1,000 Jewish people uh, in 1939 and uh, my father was the president of that community and I will never never forget the tragic night of March 8th or might have been March 9th when my father in our living room uh, and with a very nice uh, 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 huge apartment had on a dining room table spread the names of all the thousand Jews of Bulgaria. Of and, Burgas. Of Burgas, excuse me. The 1,000 Jews of Burgas. And 
there were two lists list list A and list B or uh, 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 Spisak and uh, the second Spisak which list. means the list and people were coming and saying please put me on the first one because our parents and our cousins and our this are on the first one so we want to go with them and uh, therefore uh, um, we want to switch but tell so us exactly what the two lists signify the two lists signified basically the 500 uh, the thousand Jews of Burgas were going to be shipped on different dates resettled resettled about seven days apart uh -huh. so it takes three and a half days to Treblinka on the train takes uh, three and a half days back so seven and days. then the second shipment. shipment will take place so I remember my father really all night he was receiving people and changing places from A to B. Well, B it's obvious everybody wanted to be on the later date to, to increase the chances yes, of maybe escaping yes, or yes. finding a, a way out. Yeah, they were hoping that uh, the second list would be uh, better than the first, but there was no choice. So, uh, this is the beginning of the story of the saving of the 50,000 Bulgarian Jews. And in the next segment, I will discuss why this was the best kept secret and also tell you the sequence of event that took place in 1943 with our saving. Thank you very much and Shabbat Shalom. Thank you Rabbi Asa. So you've heard it from the source and in the next story, story number seven, we're going to find out what happened to the Jews of Trakia, Trace and Macedonia which were annexed to Bulgaria and also we're gonna see how the world reacted 50 years later as to recognizing the role of Bulgaria in saving the Jews. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Shai mai vrea, shai mai vrea, drăguță ană, Ca să te îmbrac, măi, cu o năframă. Să-ți cumpăr, să-ți cumpăr cercei, măi, ană, Dar eu n-am de unde, măi, cu o dară. Auzi, dragă, fata, nechi, dragă, Aseară, poli, o tamiceană. Și acum nu sparale, să-ți cumpăr sandale, Buzunarele sunt goale, da Mai apoi trecuță, încă o băncuță Și băui în colitruță, da